Hey guys, Ed Bud here, and today I've got another update for you on my recent half marathon training. Time's flying past already in 2020, I can't believe it really, time's just disappearing, and we're fast approaching the very first races of the year. So over the course of the last week, there's been lots and lots of half marathon training going on, which kind of sounds a little bit like a slightly less exciting version of Jerry Lee Lewis's hit track, whole lot of shaking going on. So I recently had a bash at the local park run. I'm really lucky actually, it's uh, literally right behind where I live. They move it from Montague over to Yeovil and it's literally within walking distance, which is fantastic. Of course, I always run to it. So it certainly wasn't the fastest attempt at that park run for me, but I came in with an average pace around about six minutes, 39 per mile. Uh, use the Adios 4 actually. I've been really enjoying this shoe recently. I'm liking this kind of slightly more minimal cushioning. I think where I've been running a lot in the Infinity Run, it's kind of, I've been hankering for something a little bit more kind of ground connected, and this shoe really fits the bill for that. It's super light, and I love that there's so much lacing going on here. You can kind of tinker around with the tightness over the top of the midfoot. There's something about a black and white Adidas shoe as well. It just really looks fantastic. It's borderline kind of hard almost here in the midfoot area and there's a tiny bit of boost outside, it's certainly a fast shoe. I was kind of still a little bit aware about that issue with my heel as well um, when I undertook that part run. So I think this shoe enabled me to get a nice good lockdown on foot and I think I still had the handbrake on a little bit during that part run. There were certainly some people really flying. The chap that completed it uh, in first position, really moving, he was miles ahead certainly a very fit athlete. I think it was probably about the third fastest time I completed that part run, only by a second from the second fastest, but certainly happy with the effort after the excesses of Christmas. I had a good three miles sort of warm up slash warm down at the end cumulatively, so I gave my body enough time to step up and step down as well. So kicked off the week's training with 7.5 miles, that included six repeats of a half mile at roughly my 5k pace. Overall, it was about seven minutes 33 per mile, I think, on average, and use the New Balance fuel cell level. I'm not absolutely sure where they are right now. I'm sure they'll turn up. I'll get beast on the case. So I was off the pace a little bit on reps one, three, and four, but managed to make up for it on the others. I think reps five and six, a little bit more on point in terms of target pace, but it was good to get a more, um, not brutal, that's not the right word, get a more demanding effort on the books early on in the week. Next day, five steady miles at eight minutes per mile pace, so a more sustainable kind of effort for me using the Adidas Ultra Boost 20. So modifications to the insole, working a charm with this one and kept the heart rate nice and low, so nice, easy effort, but with a couple of additional miles, you know I like my three mile kind of recoveries, but I thought I'd get a couple more in there as I had the time. Certainly the Ultra Boost 20 seems to enjoy that type of pace and up to now I'm finding it an endurable and quality well-made shoe. That pain in the outer part of the heel hasn't flared up again so I'm kind of happy now. I was a little bit anxious about that. It's just really weird. I've not had any issue like that in any other running shoe over the past couple of years. This has been coming in useful. My Actic Core headlamp from Petzl. It gets dark pretty much around 5.30 p.m at the moment, although things are starting to get a little lighter, but this is coming in really handy, easy to use, and reliable and durable as well. I think it's even survived um, a bit of a mauling from young Oliver downstairs. If you don't know, Oliver's a uh, pug terrier cross, and occasionally if things go on the floor, he does have a little chew on him. Utilize those fuel cell rebels again for some more speed work the following day. If you can hear some crashing of glass and things like that, it's because the recycling lorry has just decided to turn up. Thanks guys. So 7.5 miles in total, and I achieved an average speed of about seven minutes, 19 seconds per mile. I placed two two mile repeats in there at my 5K pace. So again, pushing that kind of, just beyond that threshold, so my body can start to feel accustomed to hitting that type of pace. In fact, I don't think it was at threshold. I think it was about six minutes 50, so it's kind of half marathon goal pace. I'm trying to go off memory here, guys, and gotta be honest, as you get older, the memories start to kind of seep away and disappear and mix up together. A bit like a big cauldron of borscht. 
The rest of the miles in that run were a more relaxed pace, allowing me to kind of warm up, warm down, and then allow me a little recovery in between the two two mile repeats. I think I'll stick yourself out there sometimes, even after a hard day of work, and really push things, see how you go, see how you get on. It's a good test of your progress within your training. You've got to take yourself out of your comfort zone so that that then becomes your comfort zone after a while. You know what I mean. I think I was a bit off the pace. Rep one was about six minutes 59 and the other one was not really near. So sometimes training just doesn't happen. Harrison Brown, you know what I mean. Four more easy miles in the Adidas Ultra Boost 20. I think it was about eight minutes 51 per mile. So right into my kind of sort of active recovery type of pace. I was running some errands, so I wasn't really too bothered about pace. It was just about getting a few miles under the belt. I had some foul ups with the GPS on my watch right near the start of the run, so that kind of irritated me a little bit. It's always a good way to start a run, right? So I managed to sort out the technical issue I had with the watch and get a few miles in at that recovery type pace with a big backpack on filled with loads of old rubbish that I didn't really need. I certainly need to invest in a better backpack for running. Um, something with some additional kind of fastenings and ties. If you guys have got any good suggestions about that, I would love to see them. Please post them in the comments below. They will be greatly received. Next day, 7.5 miles at 7 minutes 30 per mile pace. Managed to hit the targets this time in the Vaporfly 4% fly knits, the crimson version. So I had a four mile kind of fart lick section in this run and utilized the Vaporflies. I've got to say, around about 180 miles now, they, they are feeling a little dead. That side, I still ran the fartlek section very fast, but they are starting to feel, I don't know, it's odd. What's the word? You know, like that material you can use for flower arranging. It kind of feels a little bit like that. I don't know whether some water's got in there and it's kind of like made it feel a lot more brittle. I think that's the only word I can think of that kind of fits the feeling that you get underfoot after a while in those shoes. Following day, I was feeling pretty tuckered out, so I decided to just do three easy miles, get those legs moving again in the Ultra Boost 20s. So pretty good mileage week for me, capped it all off with a 14 mile run on the Sunday in the ASICS Glide Ride. So my target for that was about seven minutes, 45 seconds per mile, and I knew the Glide Ride would kind of enable me to roll onto victory to meet the targets for this run. It's certainly super cushioned, super comfortable, and really stable shoe. I think this one is a bit of a slow burner. I think people will realize just how great this shoe is, you know, maybe a year down the line. Maybe they'll become like really rare, like a sort of rare Beatles record or something like that. And people will kind of hanker after them, you know. I think they will, I think it will. It'll become like a cult classic after a while. So I had a total time of about one hour 47 for that 14 mile run. Average heart rate of about 143 beats per minute. And I'm kind of trusting that heart rate reading a hell of a lot more now I've got that OH1 Plus heart rate sensor from Polar. Notable stop around there, about 9.5 miles for a bit of water, so I was feeling a bit parched. And there was some lovely Sunday sun at one point. I was kind of looking out thinking, oh, I wish I bought my shades. But alas, it didn't stay, and there was some quite cold rain a little later on. Uh, it must have been around about 10 miles and I really started to feel exceptionally cold. So I think that run shows that that strength, that stamina and that endurance are improving. And I have to be honest, the next day, following that 14 mile run, legs, everything felt absolutely fantastic. So real testament to the shoe and perhaps also to me as well. These show absolutely zero signs of wear at all. So I'm very impressed with that. It certainly could be a very durable shoe. You're gonna get your money's worth out of this one. I think it's made with care, made with quality. Maybe it's time to try out another ASICS shoe. If you've got any suggestions, post them in the comments, please, guys. Right, it's time for old Ed Bud to mosey off and do some other stuff. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching through to the end. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share with your friends. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.